Statistics and Excel, Roulette Probability Example, Part Number 5. Get ready and some coffee, because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. Because how else are you going to do statistics if you don't have Excel? What are you going to do, try to, like, write the thing down on something, like, with a knife, carving numbers into a rock? No, you need, you need Excel. Here we are in Excel, if you don't have access. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters and this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey is saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. But you can start from this point, constructing the tables as we go, or possibly just look at this from a theory standpoint about probability statistics or the roulette wheel in general. If you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet and will be continuing at the blank part of the worksheet practicing our excel formatting as we construct our practice problem let's go to the example tab to get an idea of where we have been and where we will be going we're looking at the roulette wheel remembering we're con concentrating on probability so even if you don't like the concept of gambling note that these are great games to look at because they're built on the concepts of probability and once we have those concepts down we can find them elsewhere in the natural world and find many applications for the concept of probability so with the roulette wheel we've got a many different things that we basically can be betting on but they're all in essence independent from each other and we can figure out the expected value which as we did so looks like most of the things construct on the roulette wheel have a long-term average expected value that's the same about 5.26 cents on the long term remembering that does not mean that you're going to lose that much per spin but it does mean on average you're going to lose that much over the long term that's going to be the general concept that we'll put into play and what we've basically found out when we tested the different items using our our kind of rational reasoning which is basically saying for example if we bet on red or black we get a dollar if we win we lose a dollar if we lose the odds of winning are only 18 out of 38 versus 30 20 out of 38 because there's two green numbers which means it's not a 50 50 chance game even though the payout is even that means that we have an unfavorable game and therefore are expected to lose on average over if we played it many times 5.26 cents 0 0.056526 of a dollar we, we then tested one out of 12 numbers. That pays out two for one, but there's only 12 out of 38 that chance that we win, 26 out of 38 that we lose, 
And if we calculate that expected value, we once again come up to the same expected value. With one number, we saw that we get paid out 35 to 1. But that's not a favorable game still because, of course, the odds of getting that one number are 1 out of 38 versus losing 37 out of 38. So that means that if we calculate that out on average over a long period of time, we would expect 0.0526. We also thought about, well, what would be the calculation if we did two bets on, say, two reds, for example? We can think of that many different ways, and, uh, but we come out to basically the same concept of two independent rules. We're going to lose on average 5.26 cents. So we would lose on average after two rules uh, 10.53 cents. We'll talk more about that one later. But now we're gonna say, let's see if we can empirically test these to get a better idea of what is happening. These are also the concepts that you might put together to kind of put together your own game if you wanted to like have a random number generation to kind of mirror some of the things that we're doing here. It also gives you some intuition in terms of how you might set things up in Excel and use Excel for different, different things. So we're gonna basically uh, test out and imagine that we ran a test for the one number, meaning we're gonna pick one number and test out the, the what happens compared to our expected value that we calculated uh, over here on the one number calculation. So that's gonna be what we'll do this time. In the practice tab, you'll remember we have these pre-formatted cells so you can work the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, we're gonna continue on to the blank part of the blank tab, which is on the right side and continue with our practice problem. All right, so let's go to the, let's make a skinny column. I'm gonna to go to the home tab. I'm gonna make it the same width as this column. So there's our last skinny column. Let's go to the home tab format paint that column over here in the AP the app column is now skinny so this is going to be the test of we're testing out the bet uh, bet on one number so let's make this one I don't want this one to be black I want this one to be black so let's select these ones and say this is going to be black and white. Let's go up top and make it black and white. So we're betting on one number. Okay, so let's first kind of just list out the numbers that we have. We've got the numbers that that uh, could come up. And let's think about it uh, in terms of this time we'll start off with a number one. Let's make this black and white. We'll start off with the roulette wheel has a number one on it and then two. And if I copy that down to the bottom, we have 36 numbers. So I'm going to copy that down. We have 36 numbers. And then we have a zero and a double zero, which this time I'm going to put at the bottom. So I'm going to say it's a zero. And then we've got a double zero, which I'll put a zero. And then I'll just add a decimal just so I can see the differentiation. I'll put it, I'll put it just to make it a different number. I'll make it uh, 0.01 but I'll just show it as two zeros. All right, so these I'll make a different color because that's kind of the tricky factor on the roulette wheel because the numbers, it looks like it's one out of 36, kind of, if you didn't really analyze it, but obviously the fact that we have those other two numbers skews the odds a bit. That's what's gonna oftentimes put, put the odds in the favor of the casino. Let's make these bracketed. Let's make the top part of them blue and these last bit I'll put uh, blue here. So those are gonna be the numbers. All right, and so then I'm gonna say that we're going to uh, roll, let's make a skinny column again. I'll take this skinny and then home tab, paintbrush and make a skinny AT. So then we're gonna say the number of rules that we'll have. So we'll have the number of spins and then we'll have the random number generation so let's make those black and white i'm going to go home tab fonts group and make that black and white and centered so let's say we spin it our good old 500 times so i'm going to say one two let's copy that down 500 times down to 500 
It's just gonna keep on rolling. So we'll do it enough times to get a pretty good sense of what's happening, which Excel is happy to do. And so this is why it's Excel is great, or uh, one reason at least. And then we can do a random number generation between how many numbers do we have. We're gonna say the count is gonna go up to uh, 38. So remember there's 36 numbers. The last two numbers, which are gonna be the, the zero and the double zero, are gonna be the, the 37 and 38. So equals the random and between, random between du, 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 1 comma 38. So when I see the random numbers coming up 1 through 36, those are the actual numbers on the wheel, and then I have to assign 37 and 38 to the numbers a zero and double zero. That's how we're gonna kind of think of it here. So we're gonna say, all right, so that came out to 21. If I double click on it, it's gonna keep on calculating. I'm gonna copy that down by just double clicking on the fill handle and I'm gonna say control shift down. So there it is, it populated all the way down. It's gonna keep on repopulating. So I'll leave it that way. If you wanted to make a static one, I could copy this whole thing, paste it here one, two, three, so that it doesn't keep reshuffling the numbers. So that's one way that you can simulate the roll of the wheel, or right, you can copy it over and then, and then paste it static so it doesn't keep on shifting the numbers. All right, so now I'd like to, to figure out from these rules how many of each of these numbers came up. So these are imagining a spin. We spun the roulette wheel, we got an 18. We spun the roulette wheel, we got a 13. We spun the roulette wheel, we got a six. We spun the roulette wheel and got a 38. There is no 38. Yeah, well the 38 represents the double zero or the zero, right? <laughs> okay, so let's make a skinny, another skinny one. I'm gonna make a, take this skinny, home tab, clipboard skinny, make an AW, Oh, it's skinny. And then we're gonna say numbers and or this are gonna be the buckets. This, we're using terminology for, for our uh, t t type of, of graph now that we're gonna be putting in place. So we're gonna say this is the count per bucket and this is going to be a histogram graph, so with the, the word I was looking for. This is gonna be the percent. So let's make this black and white as our headers, home tab, font group, black, white, alignment. Let's center it. So the buckets are just gonna be one, two, down to the 34 or 38. I keep on wanting to say 34, which is not correct. And I apologize if I messed up a few times. So remember these last two are representing the zero and the double zero. So because there's 36 numbers and then those two are the zero and the double zero. So maybe I'll make them a different color. Those are the funny ones, the green ones that we have to keep in mind keep on the radar. And then we're gonna say the count is going to be, how can we count these? Well, we can use uh, a count if calculation. So I can say, all right, equals count if bracket, and then the range, the argument for the range. So I'm gonna pick this whole thing up. I'm gonna say control shift down, taking me to the bottom, control backspace, taking me back up to the top. So that's gonna be the range. I want that to be F forward, meaning dollar sign before each part of the range so that when I copy it down, it will keep the same range, comma, the criteria is that I have to equal this number one. Now, as I copy this down, the next one, I wanna have the same range, that's why it's absolute referenced, but pick up the number two and count the number of number twos that come up. So let's say enter. So that means this one, this number one, uh, a one came up in this here at 500 spins of the wheel, a one came up 14 times. That's what this is basically saying. If I copy this down, double clicking on it, we copy it down and we're saying there, there's all, our, all of our numbers. Now you would expect these to, to come up somewhat evenly, right? Because if the roulette wheel is even, what are the odds of any number coming out? One over how many numbers are on the wheel, which are 38. 
let's look at what actually happens uh, if we if we if we count this out. Let's say this is uh, let's say this is the equals the count. Da -da, control shift up, so we'll double. Uh, actually, what am I doing? Not the count. Let's say this equals the sum of these items, da -da 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 -da, and it should come up to uh, the 500. So we had 500 spins. This is our double check number that everything has populated properly. We had 500 spins, and so that looks uh, correct. Uh, also, later on, we'll do some counts and use a frequency uh, calculation uh, later, but the count function works well here because these are, are uh, static numbers. They don't have any decimals to them. If they had decimals in them and whatnot, we might use the frequency and whatnot, and we'll talk more about that formula and when it, we could use it later. So then I'm going to take this is going to be equal to the count. 12, 12 ones came out out of divided by the total number of spins, 500 spins. And so I'm going to put F4 on the keyboard for that 500 to keep it the same because the next one, I want to move down to 13 divided by 500, 8 divided by 500, and so on and so forth. Enter. And then let's percentify to recognize home tab, percentify, adding some decimals, double click on the fill handle, boom, copying it down. And then we can then sum it up this way equals the sum, boom, sum it up. And it should come out to 100. That's our double check number. Let's go to the home tab number group, percentify to recognize 100%. Now, again, what would we expect? Uh, the 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 number to be these percentages to be what well, we would expect it to be around one divided by 38 if I percent of, if I add some decimals let's just add decimals we've got the uh, two point let's percentify it too just so we can see the same 2.63 right so that's what we would expect the 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 average to happen to be coming up if the roulette wheel is fair it should be hovering around that number we would think, right? So I'm going to un undo all this. Let's do some formatting here. Uh, let's take the, let's format these. I'm going to say control shift down here and then make this bracketed and blue. I'll do the same for these. I'm going to say control shift down and then maybe shift up. So I don't, I'll make those green ones a different color bracketed in blue, control shift down. I'll make all of it bracketed, but I'll keep those last ones green and I'll make these blue just so we can see that those represent the one and or the zero and the double zero. Okay, okay, let's make a skinny BA now. I'm gonna take my skinny over here and we're gonna go to the home tab, font group, make a skinny BA. And then we're gonna say, the mean let's do some statistical calculations the mean or the average of of uh, of all of these let's take a look at what that is the average of of the items here so this is the average and i'm going to say control shift down not picking up the total shift up and then enter and percentify adding some decimals so Six point uh, two point six three. We could add. Look at the median. That's the one in the middle. The one. Uh, the the yeah. The one in the middle equals the median tab. Control shift down. Shift up. Enter. And percentify. Adding some decimals. And then the mode. The one that comes up most often equals the mode. Let's do a single this time control shift down and we get to do percentify do, do, percentify do, do. the the odds that we calculated you will recall where if i make this black and white we would say the one number so one number is going to be one divided by the total numbers which is 38 so we would we would expect the odds to be equal to 1 over 38 
adding, making that a percent, adding some decimals. So that's going to be basically the mean up top here. That's what we would expect to happen. And if we did this for the for the for the rules or the spins of 500 spins, we would expect then the 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 count to be equal to that times 500 which is about 13 adding some decimals 13.26 so you'd expect in here around 13.26 we can we could uh we can do our mean calculation there uh this is the mean to equals the average of the counts instead of the percentages not picking up the 500 and we come out to 13 13.16 13 13.16 right so it's, so we're gonna say all right so that looks like it's doing what we would expect in essence let's put some brackets around that do, 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 do. let's do an expected value calculated Ex our expected value if i make that black and white we're going to say black and white so we said that that uh if we ran this 500 times our expected value let's just do it this way expected value that we calculated over here i'm going to say duh, 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 per rule we did that over here and we said that if we bet on one number then uh, we expect to be losing this 0 0.0562 basically per roll. So, right. So, we're going to say, all right. And then we're going to say, let's percentify that. Duh, duh, adding some decimal. Wait, wait, not percentify it. Don't percentify it. Just add some decimals. And then if we did that for spins of 500 spins, we would expect the expected value to be equal to this number times 500 spins about uh, 26 which is more accurately uh, uh, 26.316 let's compare that to what actually happens so we're going to say let's say we were imagining we bet on number four repeatedly for the 500 times what could happen well we can have the wins we have the losses and then we've got the total so on uh the wins we're gonna have our count here how many times out of the 500 did we win by hitting the number four i'm gonna say equals count if brackets selecting the range here's our random span range control shift down and control backspace to get back to where i want to be let's uh, go ahead and say comma the criteria is count it if you see a four there therefore out of the 500 spends we've got 13 of them which were fours how about the losses the easiest way to calculate the losses would be to say equals 500 minus 13 so that the total equals the sum of these two now i don't like doing that so much though because that's like a plug here and I'd rather recalculate it to double check that my 500 is the total. So how can I do a count? I want to count everything that is not a, uh, a, a uh, four. So one way I could do that, I could say equals count if brackets. And I can choose this whole range again, control shift down, control backspace. And then the criteria everything that's not a four not equal is shown by this sign but and then i could say not equal to a four excel will not like that though because it sees these as text fields and when i enter a text field i have to put quotations around it it's still not going to like it because after i do a text field i typically have to tie the next thing to it with an and sign which looks kind of like a not and then it should be okay so i'm going to close up the brackets and okay so now this plus this is 500 all right so if we if we win then so now we're gonna have the pay out what are we gonna earn equals if we win let's go all the way over here and say where did i have this over here we're gonna win 35 dollars 35 dollars on the win 
And if we loss, we only lose one dollar, I believe, right? One dollar over here. And so uh, bet on one number, we lose one dollar. So we get the payout is thirty-five to one. So then that's going to give us our totals. So we won uh, eighteen times. It's going to keep changing, but this number times thirty-five dollar payout per win for five hundred plays times we lost this many times but we only lost a dollar so the sum of those two is going to be these two and that's going to give us our amount let's add some decimals there so we lost in this scenario over 500 times 68 dollars uh, so we expected 26 dollars let's look at the difference difference which is going to be equal to this minus this and so now we would expect this number to flip possibly between positive and negative somewhat randomly somewhat equally between the two if we have a if we have a if that looks correct right we can even test that right we can say okay let me see how many times this outcome comes out to be comes out to be positive versus negative over the long run. If if we did it correctly, you think it'd be like 50%, right? Uh, but you could get long strings of, of one or the other. So, so that on average looks like we're getting pretty close uh, with our with our calculation of uh, the the expected value at five cents. We're gonna be losing five cents on average over the long term which again you can't really see if you spun the wheel one time because you're either going to lose a dollar or win the 35 dollars but if you did it repeatedly for many times in this case 500 times you would think you would gravitate towards the average loss of that 0.05626 500 times that would give us an expected value expected profit right or loss in this case 26.316 which we can see that we kind of empirically tested here. We came out to 14 wins versus uh, versus the 489 losses, but we get paid 35 to one, which gives us our 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 calculation uh, down here, and, and we can see it's pretty close. It's not going to be perfect because these are going to be estimates and probability. All right, let's go ahead and make this black and white, black white. And I'll center these. Let's center those. Let's make this blue and bordered, bordered and uh, blue. And we'll make this bordered blue, blue and bordered. Let's make this blue and bordered. Let's make this uh, blue and bordered. Now, note, of course, we have basically a histogram set up here. So we could create a histogram from either the count or the percent. I could say control shift down, control, what is that? control shift down, not picking up the total, shift up and insert. I don't need to insert the histogram here because I already have my buckets set up and the buckets are one through. So I can just pick the, the good old bar chart and I could see the, the numbering system is counting, uh, is counting each number. So I'm going to say to do it. And so now I pulled it out so I can see the numbers down here, one through uh, 38, and it's going up to the percentages, which uh, each of these numbers you would expect to be around that uh, 2.63, the 2.63. Uh, and so we can we can keep on running this and, and see how it uh, changes and so on. And we could do a similar thing if I was to take the count over here. So if I was to take the count and then enter, insert a, just a bar chart, boom, and call this the count. And we're gonna put that over here. You would expect that to be hovering around, uh, what, what, did, what did we say? Uh, the count should be hovering around 13, right? 13.16. So we could see here, that would be in between these two somewhere, doot, 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 right there. And I could see if I keep on adjusting this, we're looking like in between here. Doot, 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 doot. And so that's gonna be you know, the general idea uh, with the graphing of it. 
So next time we're going to continue this and say, okay, let's do a similar kind of thing, uh, but some of the other items on the roulette wheel and actually kind of uh, test out what actually happens if we rolled it 500 times and we chose red or black, or we rolled it 500 times and we, we were betting on the first 12 or the second 12 or the third 12 numbers and so on.